So in this chapter, since we've talked about luminosity of stars, how much energy a star's putting out, we talked about masses of stars. We talked about spectral types. You know that, oh, be a fine guy, kiss me, those different, those seven spectral types. Now, finally, we can talk about something called hersprung russell diagrams. And historically, if you look into it, these were two um, astrophysicists, I think I got this right, that um, were studying characteristics of stars, and they came up with this idea independently. And what they did is to go ahead and prepare a scatter plot. And we do that a lot, this a lot in physical science. If we have two parameters like a star's mass and a star's luminosity or a star's temperature and a star's luminosity, two parameters that we're wanting to see if, there's, if they're related, we make a scatter plot. And so here is a scatter plot. That's um, an HR diagram, and on this scatter plot you see stars. And an HR diagram has temperature along the um, down here along the x-axis. Notice we have decreasing, um, well we have increasing temperature from right back to left again. So it's getting hotter from right back to left again. Um, notice along the y-axis we have luminosity. The star is pumping out more energy as you go up along the y-axis. And remember that we have this, um, this brightness scale called absolute magnitude, how bright the star would appear at a, at, at a common distance of 10 parsecs. So absolute magnitude goes hand in hand with luminosity. So those are both along the y-axis, increasing as you go up the y-axis. Now, notice then also along the x-axis, we said temperature goes from right back to left again, increasing temperature. So up here, or even down here, I've gone ahead and superimposed those seven spectral types we talked about, the O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. Those are seven spectral types, and they correspond to temperatures of um, seven, seven different basic temperatures of stars as their main sequence stars. So that actually then can be superimposed along with temperature. Does that make sense? So here is our HR diagram, a hersprung russell diagram, abbreviated HR diagram. So I'm in a scatter plot like this, what we do then, or what they did, Hersprung and Russell did independently, is they looked for kind of groups or trends in stars. And so they came up with this important trend of stars, and it's a little masked here maybe, but important trend of stars called main sequence. And actually, this is gonna be kind of a stage of, a, of the star, this set of stars that lie kind of on a diagonal line that goes from the upper right to the lower left. No, I said that wrong. The upper left to the lower right, final answer. Um, that's our main uh, set of stars called main sequence. And then we have a group of stars we call giants, a group of stars called supergiants, and down here on the bottom we have a group of star stars called generally white dwarfs. So these kind of four circles, four sets of, of uh, types of stars I've, I've circled here are, are showing, and we'll talk about these stages of their life later on, but these are different stages of the life of a star. So um, I think this is a pretty good little uh, applet. If you have um, the CD that came with this textbook or if you have access to these little applets online, it's kind of neat because you can play around with putting um, scattering stars on your own HR diagram. So for instance, if I click here, Spica. Spica is a famous star. You, um, you arc. You take the Big Dipper handle and you arc to the star called Arcturus and you speed on to the star called Spica. So when I'm hovering over this, this, uh, this radio button here for Spica, notice along the bottom there it says that the luminosity of Spica is 23,000 times the luminosity of our sun and the temperature of Spica runs about 26,000 um, Kelvin. So boy, that's pretty hot, isn't it? So what I can do then is go find that over here. 
Okay, so I'm looking for 26,000, okay, uh, temperature-wise. And notice luminosity, I need to jack it up to, wow, uh, 23,000 times the luminosity of our sun. And if you get the ballpark-ish, it will go ahead and place it on your uh, scatter plot for you. But if you don't get close enough, like I didn't, it will go ahead and put it back. So I don't want to belabor, but I do want to get one. Come on, Spica. So the temperature, about 26,000. They're kind of fun. And, ooh, luminosity. Um, I need to go up a little bit. Um, luminosity, about 23,000. Whew, there's Spica. And you can do that for all of these stars and make a scatter plot. And maybe see if you can find those trends of main sequence and the giants and the white dwarfs. Okay. So main sequence stars, kind of isolating the main sequence stars. They look like this. Um, notice, and we're going to talk more about this, but um, be really familiarizing yourself with this band of stars that goes from the upper left to the lower right on the HR diagram. Notice that we have, um, as they are main sequence stars, we have the most massive stars up here, and we have in the upper um, left-hand corner, and the lower right-hand corner, we have the least massive stars. And if you're kind of, and we'll talk more about this later, but these uh, more massive stars in the upper, um, upper left, they live their lives very quickly. They have shorter lifespans than these, these uh, cooler stars down here in the lower right-hand corner. So these are main sequence stars. Then we have the giants and supergiants. And honestly, the thing about the giants and supergiants is they might not necessarily be any warmer, but they're more luminous. Notice they're kind of up on the HR diagram, meaning that they're very luminous. And their large luminosity is re directly related to their large radii. They are expanding. So actually, we're going to see that as stars age and leave the main sequence, one of the things they have in common in general, if they're, even if they're medium or large size, is they expand and get bloated. And so they're more luminous, but they're not necessarily hotter. Okay, we have giants and supergiants. And then we have our cute little white dwarfs. And I love the, the phrase, a white dwarf is a retired star, because that's kind of what it is. Our, our relatively low mass stars, like stars are um, up to eight solar masses, we say, will end their lives as white dwarfs. They're retired. Um, and notice what white dwarfs are on the HR diagram. They're relatively warm because they're kind of you know, remember the, the hottest part of the HR diagram is over here, but they're relatively underluminous because they're kind of low on the luminosity scale. So they're, they're kind of embers. So in order to fully describe a star, then, we need, in addition to its spectral type, there's seven spectral types, we also need to know its luminosity class. So in general, we have these, these three luminosity classes, one, two, and three, that kind of cover our giants. Um, four is a subgiant stage. And five, if a star is classified as a luminosity class main sequence, then it is a main sequence star. <laughs> so just to kind of put this in perspective, and I'm not going to emphasize really this semester how do we get, how do we assign our luminosity classes. Um, but just know, um, and we'll talk more about the main sequence stage of a star's life, but most stars out there are in their main sequence. Most stars out there are luminosity class 5. Our sun is a main sequence star. Specifically, our sun is a G-type spectral type, and the, the, the spectral types then are subclassified into 10, 0 through 9, and it's a G2, and it's a main sequence star. Um, some other stars, Sirius, it's um, an A1, and it's also main sequence. Uh, Proxima Centauri, it's a cool M type, um, spectral type star, M5.5, um, 
the Roman numeral five means it's a luminosity class five. It's also main sequence. Um, Betelgeuse in Orion is an uh, M2, and notice it's spectral class one, which means it's a supergiant. So HR diagrams, and you'll have a, you know, a few questions on your unit three exam over HR diagrams. You know, what can we tell from an HR diagram? A lot. So what we do is we place a star, we position a star on the HR diagram with regard to temperature and luminosity or spectral type in absolute magnitude, it's the same thing. And we know a lot. We know its temperature because of where it is. We know its color in general because of where it is. Remember, the cooler stars are red, the, hot, the hotter stars are blue. We know its spectral type because of where it is, because spectral type is, remember, directly related to temperature. We know its luminosity because of where it is on the HR diagram. I didn't emphasize this, but can you see these diagonals, these um, radius of these stars? Um, here we have 10 to the negative third um, solar radii. Here's 10 to the negative second solar radii. Up here we have one solar radii. So my point is we can tell we can tell what the radius of the sun star is um, by its placement on the HR diagram. Just 